Hello, everybody. Hello there. The masked man. Welcome to, yeah, welcome to our uh, Thursday 528 membership meeting of the you VCBL. Right to me. don't, don't you dare sneeze, Ed, even with the mask on. <laughs> That's right. America. But yeah, I know we're going to cover this, but can I carry a gun like this? That's one of the questions everybody's been asking us. And the so, answer, uh, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, the answer to that is yes. Yes. Uh, oh, that's not what I heard on the interweb. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I, I don't know where all this is coming from. Is it is it people that are from other states that are saying stuff, or are people uh, just overreacting? Uh, Virginia's law on masks doesn't specifically call out guns at all. The whole idea of the mask law was the Ku Klux Klan. They didn't want people running around hiding their identity and terrorizing other people. Uh, the guns wasn't a part of it. However, uh, it is a felony. How, but they, they have, in the law, they have exceptions. The main exception is for you to be, well, not the exception, but for you to be charged under the mask law, your intent has to be to conceal your identity. And since, like Ed, you put your name underneath your, your face, uh, you weren't definitely weren't concealing your identity. But, uh, you know, and the whole fact that we're wearing masks because the governor has ordered us to do this in the middle of, a, of this uh, COVID-19 thing means that, uh, you know, you, you are clearly doing it for medical reasons. And that's another exception in there, medical reasons and medical uh, reasons during a state of emergency dealing with with uh, with health, and that's exactly where we are. And on top of that, Executive Order 61 um, said that um, the provisions of the mask law uh, that that apply to them not not uh, uh, working uh, when there's a this emergency state of emergency, he invoked that as well. So I mean. He's kind of the, the bases are covered from a whole different set of angles. So I suggest well, you know, but years ago, years ago when we used to have these open carry litter pickups that would be winter time and you'd put a mask on, I used to wear my ID on my sleeve like the airport employees, so that if they ever said, Well, his intent was to hide who he is, I'm like, if his that was his intent, why would he why would he wear his ID on the outside of his clothes? But we That's have right the, there, there's been an, there's been an attorney that we're we're familiar with that came out and did one of these Facebook lives and didn't talk about the intent to conceal yourself at all. He just talked about the wearing the mask. So I think there's been a lot of confusion out there. Yeah, so everybody um, put your mask on, take a deep breath, you're okay. <laughs> uh, you know, there, there's, there's not gonna be a problem with this. And if there is, uh, I guess whoever arrests you can buy you your next new, new nice shiny house somewhere. Or a case of masks. <laughs> a case of masks. That might be harder to find than a new house. It Jeez. might be. So, uh, but anyhow, that yeah, I've we've been getting inundated with that question, and again, uh, and again, I, people have a, a a reason to be concerned because it's a, it's a class six felony. It's not some minor class. You know, none of us would even want to get a class four misdemeanor that's merely a a, a, a fee, uh, but much less a felony. So it's, you know, it's fair game that, that people should be asking, especially if there's conflicting information. And I think you posted um, something from a lawyer on the Facebook page as well on this issue. So, yeah. So I, I posted when somebody asked about the mask law, I'm not an attorney. I don't pretend to be an attorney, but I, I sometimes give my opinion and say, this is not legal advice, but what I did in that case is I just posted the code and emphasized where they talked about uh, where they talked about the intent. Then the other thing I did is one of the uh, attorneys from U.S. Law Shield, mm -hmm. which is someone that has supported us, he wrote a statement basically about the same thing, talking about the intent, and that was also reposted. But you know, we and I and I talked to our own legal trust. And they are so busy with lawsuits and whatever else, they didn't really have time to cover something for tonight. But basically, when I told him uh, what we were talking about, they're like, yeah, you, you're exactly on point. The intent has to be there. Yeah. And again, the exceptions are there and the executive order spelled out that uh, this is an ongoing thing right now, that the, that that law is waived, in essence, for you to wear a medical mask. 
Okay. So, uh, Mike, by the way, while, while we have a, uh, a second, I just want to, and before I forget, Mike, um, our uh, state gun show coordinator, said that with Virginia starting to open, like patio restaurants open tomorrow and things like that, but with things starting to look like they're going to start trickling open, he said, if you normally work gun shows or want to work gun shows or whatever, get in contact with either him and his contact information is on our webpage under gun show coordinators. Get in contact with him or the other people that you normally get in contact so that when they start gearing things up, they don't have to scramble to try and find people to work gun shows. Please. And if you have not gotten your membership card yet, you can use your PayPal receipt. And if you joined a different way, Well, if Pat lost her connection. Um, I still got you. But what Pat was going to say, I think, is that you can use your PayPal, uh, you can use your PayPal receipt of joining as your membership card because I think the membership department is processing late December, like around Christmas time, applications. And for those of you that don't know, you know, a normal good day at a gun show, we'd have 60, 70, 80 people sign up to become members. And around lobby day, that number turned into over 1,000 people a day. And we don't farm that work out to people because we protect the membership database very carefully. So we've got people that are working on that and you're a member. And not only are you a member, but your membership doesn't expire until September of 2021. So don't worry if you don't have the piece of plastic in your hand right this second. You're, you're a member in good standing. Your uh, membership won't expire till September 21st, and we are uh, not September 21st, September 2021, and we are working uh, diligently to catch up and smoothen that out. Yeah, we we didn't we wanted we extended the the, the memberships out that extra year just because it is taking so long to process. But, um, we're still working. Uh, we're trying to come up with an ultimate solution that will we won't be in this mode in the future. Uh, since our membership has increased so dramatically. And we've got uh, John Pierce is working on this, trying, we're looking at a, a, a nice solution for this, where ultimately, um, you know, hopefully even you guys can maintain your own membership information and get reminders and stuff. And it, it'll be a nice system, but right now we're still trying to pull it together. So it's a, uh, it's a battle. It's a good, it's a good problem, but it is a problem. And we, apologize there but it's been has had to wait so long uh, we're certainly not happy about that uh, if i had it my way that you'd get the membership materials the next day or, or at the same time but it just that just doesn't work so i, I see john lynn and uh, posted up a question on the screen there if you see that this was uh john yes yeah, what's going on with ah uh, What's What's going going on? On? Yeah. Okay. Well, that lawsuit is alive right now. We've got that sitting uh, aside because of getting ready for some of the other these new gun laws coming in. Uh, that suit is still very much there, and um, we're uh, I'll be talking to the attorneys about when we want to get rolling on that one again. Partly, part of the problem is, you have to understand, we're waiting for the courts to completely open right now. They were open for emergency actions, and we got took advantage of that for the, the work that we did in, in opening, uh, in trying to open indoor ranges. Uh, but the, this case, the emergency part was over right before lobby day, and so now we're not in emergency mode, so now we're waiting for the courts to start opening and taking regular cases. So that's also why it's it's sitting there. Uh, we definitely want to do something with it because we don't want the governor to, to pull the same trick again next year with the same old phony, oh, we got an emergency thing. Um, so unfortunately, you know, he, uh, hypo you know, if hypocrisy was a good thing, which it's not, but if it was a good thing, we would have the best governor of Virginia ever had, uh, guaranteed. Um, him walking around with no mask on the beach, uh, you know, right up next to people. Taking taking the hundreds of selfies. Just selfies left and right. And this is a, supposedly a doctor. Um, so 
I have to say supposedly, because I don't know what else to make of him, you know. Uh, the, the first rule is supposed to be do no harm, and clearly he doesn't believe in that when it comes to certain things. So, um, yeah. anyhow, so his, his hypocrisy is there. But the, the good news is that uh, at least most of the ranges are now open. Now, I don't have a report on all of them. I know when this thing first started, I got an email from one range that said, oh, I agree with this. I wouldn't want to uh, have my employees exposed to this, so we're going to stay closed, to which I just shrugged and go, fine, it's your range. You know, It's your car. Right. If you want to go out and take a sledgehammer and start crushing it, you can do that too. I mean, I don't care. Uh, but we wanted to make sure the ranges had their options. Uh, to stay open if they wanted to, because we don't want anything to happen to these guys. This is a, it's an important part of our rights. And so I'm pleased that they're open. I did an interview with the, um, with the British press at, uh, at Colonial Shooting Academy. The Colonial was nice enough to, uh, to make accommodations for that. Um, so uh, it was a chance to talk to the, the British people about uh, the importance, uh, well, why people would want to buy guns during something like the COVID-19. Uh, you know, I can see where some people go, well, it's just, that's a virus or a, a, a virus. Why are you buying guns against that? So I had, basically I explained the whole, the whole thing about the fact that the thin veneer of, of society can disappear in a flash. Just look at Minnesota, buildings burning and everything else. That can happen in a flash anywhere uh, under the right conditions. And uh, COVID was one that, well, if the food supply got knocked out, uh, if you couldn't find, couldn't get water, if electricity was knocked out, people were frightened. Um, people were getting things stolen, uh, food and stuff taken from them. People started looking ahead and said, you know, I may need to protect my family. Um, and uh, so I explained all that. that it, was just, it was kind of a, a concept that the, they, they're not as independent as over there as we are here, especially going. Well, there's a lot. There's certainly a lot of people that when they realize that there are food shortages and things that are happening, there's a lot of people that would be. Uh, I know we don't like to to put people in Republican or Democrat, but there are a lot of people that normally don't vote the way that we do that um, now did because they went out. They went out and bought a gun. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That, so, uh, that's that's well, welcome back to Pat. Oh, there we go. Pat's back. Pat, you just froze and then you disappeared. Yeah, gotta love this rural internet. Yeah. So I think we covered. Phillips, the like, Phillips, like, hey, knock Pat off just for fun. <laughs> it's it's been like, no, that kind of guns. day. Yes. I just have to. Uh, well, you just have to push her away. So. Um, so we've uh, so Pat, while you were gone, we uh, we discussed a few things. Uh, we we finished cov covering the mass thing. Talked a little bit about uh, an interview I had with the uh, British press over the COVID nineteen, um, and talked about gun shows. Uh, hopefully coming back. Now I, we don't know how yeah. soon. We just need I, to be ready. I could hear everything. I just couldn't um, talk to you. So I thought you had. Oh, I figured you rebooted. Okay. Nope. On the uh, on the message boards, a lot of things. I mean, every day something is going on in Richmond. Something about something, and a lot of people message in and go, "Is the next rally on such and such day?" And are are you guys who's who's rallying here? And what's the plan? And I'm like, there's VCDL does not have a rally plan besides the 2021 lobby day. And if we do have something come up, we will publish it far and wide, well, we'll know. everywhere. So if you see a two A rally or something like that, and it doesn't come from us. It's not a VCDL rally. It doesn't mean that VCDL members might go. But it's not our rally unless Philip says it is and then sends it out to everybody and then we disseminate that. Yeah, keep in mind right now, we are extremely focused on first and foremost, fighting the legislation that passed and um, also working on positioning for next year because we're stuck with the exact same legislature for the 2021 session. So it will be even worse is my prediction in the next session than it was in this past one. So we've really got to position ourselves uh, both financially and uh, boots on the ground, people like you working on the watch teams and everything else and um, getting ready for Lobby Day 2021 because that needs to be even bigger than Lobby Day 2020. 
uh, we really need to mobilize. And right now we just don't have the resources to put together a rally in, in say July. Uh, our, our manpower, our resources are much better focused on fighting the legislation that did pass and keeping any more legislation from passing in the next session. Yeah, and some of these rallies that are being put up, yeah, a lot of them want us to participate because of, there's so many of you, and you, when you guys get get out there, it's, it's a big deal. So a lot of people want us to be a part of their rally. But our focus is on gun rights. Uh, some of these rallies are about opening up Virginia. It's not that we disagree with that, uh, but that's not our mission. Our mission is to protect your gun rights. If we start getting off in a million other little missions, then your, your gun rights are, are not going to be protected the way they need to be. We figure if we cover that base, we've given you the, what you need to be able to do all the other things in your life, that at least you can do that while being protected. So um, we're very much mission-oriented. That's how we have been. That's how we, we've, we've always been from our inception. Very and our great. locality reps, that where, where a person from each locality is reporting back, that's full now, right? Yes, we've got every base covered, and that's already paying off. We are watching three localities right now. Um, we're watching Hampton, who uh, is voting to spend one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars with the uh, uh, with the Bloomberg uh, 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 on Mom's demand. Yeah, well, the yeah the uh, um, the research branch uh, up in Maryland. Of, uh, of the, of the uh, university, I can't think of the name of the, the, the exact name of the uh, organization, but they do research on gun gun policy. And so they're spending $150,000 to get input from these guys, which are owned by Bloomberg, basically. He's donated a billion dollars to the university up there uh, over time. And um, the, the fear, of course, is that, of course, this is all going to be about gun control. The only way to control crime is through gun control is what we're afraid they're going to say. But we don't know that. It's conceivable they could actually not say that and say, well, you need to do more with something maybe in the, in the poorer areas of town. Uh, so we don't know, but we're watching that. We, we did have 10 people show up. And they spoke. Uh, they, had, they could only have one in a room at a time with the, with the board with the city council in Hampton, and um, they spoke against this they, again, basically saying we don't really have a lot of faith um, that uh, the John Hopkins uh, School of Gun Gun Control, whatever they call themselves, is going to be unbiased. So they're watching that. We will be keeping careful eye on that report when it comes back and what it suggests that they do. And uh, at the inappropriate time, if it looks like it's going to do anything to do with gun control, we're going to activate everybody in, in the Hampton area. And hopefully by then they'll have regular meetings so that we can flood the building. Um, we've got that going on. We've got Alexandria. We got, uh, again, our watch team up there is very active right now, keeping an eye on Alexandria and the shenanigans there. We have Loudoun County, and actually there's a fourth one uh, that we'll be keeping an eye on, uh, just Falls Church. So uh, it's starting. It's starting early, and, and this is going to accelerate. So all those watch teams are, are going to continue to be a linchpin in protecting our rights because this is where I see the biggest attack on day-to-day -day carry, day-to-day -day possession for regular gun owners is going to be the local gun control. I think that's where we're going to feel the pinch the most and why we've got to. But it's a pinch we can control to some degree because it is local. And we need people, again, to stay engaged and go out to those meetings and do what you did during the sanctuary cities because the other side is constantly fighting us. So we can never sit back on our heels and wait and see. Yeah, yeah. You know, we get the kind of turnout we had uh, for sanctuaries. Uh, we'll be able to put the brakes on all across the state. Uh, say, or, or and if we in the areas that we can't put the brakes on, hopefully they will backpedal, much like we saw in the General Assembly. This is where it's really, really important that every BCDL member get out there and contact their um, city council members, 
their board of supervisor members and their state delegates and state senators and get to know them on a first name basis because um, you have the most control, the most influence at the local level first and then at the state level. Yeah, we did a, we did a, uh, a VCDL video on now, hey, now I'm a member. Now what can I do to keep helping and make things grow and move along? So in the uh, public chat, I'll put a link to that YouTube that you can save and then listen to it on your way to work or watch it another time. It's just good information for you to uh, know and share. And even while you're watching us now, go ahead and share this video to your contacts and your walls so that people catch on and uh, can follow along with what's going on because this is up to the minute news. Yeah, and uh, uh, we were asked if we needed some more people in Falls Church. I think we've got Falls Church pretty well covered. Um, so, but, um, we'll, you know, again, we'll be watching. This will be, this is a part of our focus. Uh, I'm going to, I still haven't had a chance to start the, um, uh, scorecard for the votes this year for all the, uh, delegates and senators. Uh, I'll have to be starting that pretty soon. I got, I got sidetracked today. Our, our counterpart in Arizona wanted me to write a letter, a letter for their newsletter an article for the newsletter talking about that they want to avoid the problem we had here where too many people weren't taking seriously the threat that was out there and didn't vote or, or weren't registered to vote. So I've written something for them uh, to put out there to say, yeah, it can happen anywhere. If it can happen here, it can happen in Arizona. It can happen anywhere. Um, and I, I, I told him at the end, I said, uh, you know, a wise man learns from his mistakes and a wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. And I said, be the wiser man and uh, learn what went wrong in Virginia and don't recreate that. Now, speaking of votes and candidates, I, I know VCDL, we're, we're strictly Virginia based and Virginia concerned. But the, the topic always comes up when the president tweets something or says something about the Second Amendment, then it, it's, it's like a bloodbath or a mud bath or whatever you want to call it about our own members going at each other on whether the president's doing his job or whether he should be reelected or not. But all, all we ask you is choose the most pro-gun candidate. Even if, you're, even if you don't want to vote for a pro-gun candidate, vote against the most anti-gun candidate because unless you do that, you're not helping us move the ball forward. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, perfection is something we're never going to find, and we're stuck with what we're stuck with. But you, you have the difference between somebody like our current governor, who is going out of his way to push gun control, to basically poke gun owners in the eye. Uh, he's constantly doing this stuff. And there could have been somebody else that would have been a governor that maybe wouldn't have been all that exciting, but also wouldn't have been a, a vicious enemy like we have now. Um, sure. So, you know, you, you have to choose from the menu and uh, try not to choose arsenic. If you can avoid that, choose something else that doesn't kill you. Uh, that's that's my suggestion. So be realistic about it. Uh, you know, yeah, we'd all like perfect candidates. However, if you vote in the primaries, you can help get the closest to perfection we can get that way. At least you can pick the best. Or if you run. If you run. Yeah. What What better? than a VCDL member to run in a local election. What better than that? We've had a few do that and win. Um, so um, do that, that would be great. So Kevin wants to know, I guess, you know, we talked about having a person in each locality and I guess there's, there's members out there that want to team up with or help out the local member in the locality. And so Kevin wants to know, will there be a contact list by county for the watch team leader so that they can help them move things along or cover for them if they can't go to a meeting or whatever? Uh, the answer to that is no. Um, people that live in the area that might want to get in touch with the watch team leader to be on the team, I'm letting the watch team leader set up their own teams. Once they're a leader, they set up their own team. They get to know that they know the local people. They can figure out who's good at this and maybe who is, wouldn't be all that useful. Sometimes you get somebody that's a volunteer that's you've been better off without anything. Uh, but you guys should almost all be really good at this. But I'm not. One reason I'm not giving it out is some of these people want to be on the watch team helping, but they're not somebody that likes being in the public eye. They really don't want all their 
uh, information out there where anybody can get to it, their email and name, full name and phone number and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm not posting that. You know, you have an initial and a last name, and if, if you have a reason to contact them, then you, get, you go through me. So John is asking um, about U.S. senators running for office. Um, VCDL cannot endorse anyone. They are um, strictly nonpartisan. VCDL PAC is a state PAC, so they cannot endorse anyone in the federal elections. However, the survey results will be online where you can go and see how the different candidates that did answer surveys, um, how they rated in the survey. And I don't know if he actually posts the answers to the questions on not there. Not yet. No, not yet. No, they, they just get a very pro-gun, pro-gun, neutral, anti-gun, very anti-gun rating. And aren't there like five, not three? Five people well, running for, for US. centers. Oh, um, well, this is this is uh, in, in, if you will, at the primary level or convention level. There, I believe there are three Republicans. I'd have to look. I believe I believe there's people for the Senate. There's more for and, congressional positions. There's quite a few. Right. Yeah. The other thing you can do is call them up and ask them questions. If they won't talk to you, that's a pretty good sign they're not going to be responsive. Now, we, so. we've gotten some responses since that alert went out. So if you if you go up and re-download and recheck, you'll find that if, if, I think Jim was trying to keep up with this. He's been doing some other things as well. But we've been getting responses in. Uh, from the candidates because you guys have called them and said, where's your survey? Now, in a few cases, it could be that it was just a, literally just a snafu on their side that they they couldn't find the survey or they had it and it went to their spam basket. But they are, um, we were getting them in. In fact, uh, I haven't, I need to check the facts. I know the facts kicked out quite a few pages today. I haven't looked at it yet. So that's probably more surveys coming in. So keep checking it. Check it. But those calls and emails to the to them saying, where is your VCDL survey? It does work. It will get their attention. You just have to do it. Right. You can also call them and ask them questions, specific questions about issues that you're concerned about, especially gun issues. And uh, I have found that if somebody is running in my district and I call them, um, then they almost always will return my call and speak to me for uh, a, at least a short period of time and, and try to answer my questions. And if they won't do that, then I won't vote for them. Yeah, if they treat you bad before the election, they're definitely not going to treat you very well after the election. Um, so, and if they really are concerned and, and are worried about staying on the right track, they will stay in touch with you. Um, they will take calls and stuff from constituents. Right. Uh, and you'd be surprised the power of a constituency. Almost all of them too have Facebook pages and you can message them on Facebook and ask them questions. So kind of flipping through some of the questions here. Uh, I saw a few people asking Philip about the new gun laws that are taking effect. Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Okay, yeah, we're, we're, I'm going to, uh, in part five of six on the uh, v, uh, lobby day that uh, is coming up that, in, in VA alert, which is written now, I'm, I'm doing a couple little tweaks to it, it'll be going out probably tonight or tomorrow. Uh, there's a link back to that, uh, to the page that where I did a detailed analysis of all the gun bills. Um, so... The, some of the key ones that are coming up, though, are, again, localities being able to pass gun control. So they can control firearms, ammunition, uh, carrying, transport, possession um, in, in their government buildings, in their parks, um, at festivals or anything that requires a permit, um, and the surrounding streets of, of the festival or whatever that uh, is a permitted event. That's one of the big ones. Like I say, will that's something that could that either will neutralize and we won't notice much difference from what we have right this minute, or it will. If we don't do that, we're going to be finding a lot of restrictions when you travel around the state, particularly if you go to the um, the occupied territories. 
So um, that's one. Number two, the red flag. Um, we may look at doing something to communicate with uh, law enforcement on the red flag law. The truth is it's, it's pointless. It's stupid. It doesn't help anybody. Currently, Virginia has temporary detention orders. That's all they need. This other thing is, is totally not necessary. And I'm sort of thinking that it won't be used very much, but we'll see. And we will be, if you know anybody starting in July that, that gets red flagged, if you will, uh, we need to talk to them. We're going to be watching any of this that happens very carefully. So um, that's, that's one coming up. Universal background checks, that'll be coming up also. That one um, does not affect a, a gift. If you truly give something to somebody, anybody and you get nothing in return, then you're good. You don't require the background check. If they give you anything in return uh, at all, then you have to do a universal background check. It doesn't apply to curios and relics. If you have a curio and relic license, it doesn't apply to antiques. So if you're buying a gun made before 1898 or you're buying a black powder gun that's a replica of a gun made before 1898, there's no background check required. You can continue to get those guns as you do currently. So it's only a bona fide sale. Um, on the red flags, uh, going back to that for a second, um, it does, there, there, are, they, there are a lot of protections in ours. Again, the whole thing needs to go. I don't like any of it, but at least if we're stuck with it for the next couple of years, uh, it does have some protections in there that uh, should make it very hard for somebody to be falsely flagged. But we'll see. We'll see what happens once it's out there. Let's just, uh, let's hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Uh, let's see what else. What else we got, Pat? One handgun a month. Oh yes, that's basically the same as it was uh, back before uh, the repeal. So we're back. We, we just rolled back to 2012. We're now living in 2012 again, um, and we have um, no um, uh, training online. And right. we isn't that, isn't that ironical? Ironic that the they no sooner signed this into law. Uh, then COVID-19 comes along mm -hmm. and shows that it would have been smart to have such provisions so that people didn't have to go face to face to take these courses. It showed it was like God was coming down and telling the Democrats how stupid they were. Look at this. Boom. You know, here comes COVID-19. Um, but that doesn't take effect till January 1. So you, people will still be able to take online courses through December 31st. And your course, once you've taken it, is valid. It doesn't expire on, on January 1st, 2021. It's still valid um, as far as your training to get a permit. It's just that you won't be able to get online training anymore until we can reverse this. And we need to reverse it as well. It's, it's really stupid. You know, some states do have provisions where if you, if you have an emergency, uh, again, a divorce maybe that's turning violent, uh, the person can go in front of a, in Utah, you can apply for a, a, basically a temporary permit um, in front of, for, from a judge. And he look at your circumstances. He can just get you, a, it, right, get, get you a permit immediately, basically, and not make you wait 45 or 50, 60 days to get the permit. Uh, in Virginia, um, you know, some people say, oh, well, we've got open carry. But, you know, that's not fair. Not everybody can open carry. Um, you know, honestly, if, if your spouse is out to kill you, they're dead serious. They want to murder you. You need to have that gun with you everywhere you go. And open carry isn't going to be the answer to that. So we need to get this get this fixed. In fact, maybe we need to consider once we get a real general assembly back and a real governor, uh, getting some kind of an emergency provision in there where they not only does it, can the training be waived, but they can get you the uh, permit immediately. We tried that once, and the Democrats killed it. This was for women or men. I mean, it's more rare for men, but it was for uh, somebody that, that um, got a uh, restraining order, a protective order against their spouse because they, their life was in jeopardy. The bill would have allowed that protective order to become a concealed handgun permit on the spot. 
Democrats killed it because they're not interested in protecting women. Uh, I don't know what I don't know how else to interpret that. It wasn't a difficult thing. It was only temporary. You didn't get a permit for the rest of your life. You got a permit on the spot, and then you needed to apply for your full permit and go through the full background check. But at least you were covered from the moment you got that protective order. That right. to me was a logical, logical kind of uh, gun law, and that was just. Democrats just couldn't handle logical gun laws, so that, that got thrown out. Yeah, I saw um, that. Uh, I saw that Mike uh, Wilbert actually uh, spoke up in the in the chat there and said, uh, "He just, you know, to reiterate for those that join late, schedules are changing day to day. All the VCO, VCO gun show coordinators coordinators will need volunteers to help. So keep an eye on the VA alert. Bring a friend or relative or coworker to the gun show." If they attend a gun show with a non-member, the non-member will be admitted to the show free if they join the VCDL at the VCDL booth at the show entrance. So that way you can get in the show and save some money and support VCDL at the same time. Okay, yes, another question came up. Um, uh, Corey uh, asked uh, if the one gun per month um, is also for permit holders. No, this, and again, you may not have been a, a permit holder back in 2012. Uh, and I, I shouldn't have assumed people were. Um, no, permit holders are exempted. Uh, if you have a concealed carry permit, the one gun law, one handgun a month law does not apply to you. It's only if you don't have a permit. So thank you for, uh, for having me clarify that, Corey. Right, and while we're on the subject of permits, um, most of the counties, well, pretty much all the counties are processing the renewal permits, which can be mailed in. Uh, and we had gotten some reports of counties not accepting new permits. If you run across that, if you're applying for a new concealed handgun permit, which currently you would have to apply for in person, and your locality will not make arrangements, make an appointment for you to... Um, somehow get that application in, please contact us because we've been working with the various counties and um, helping them make accommodations so that they can still accept and process new concealed handgun permit applications. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Suffolk, um, for example, uh, Suffolk was not issuing new permits because uh, the clerk didn't want uh, you know, to have to have people coming in with all this COVID stuff. And we, we chatted. I said, that's not acceptable. Um, other, other localities are still doing new permits. Um, in one locality, you, you schedule it and uh, the clerk her, uh, herself comes outside. This is in Stafford. And um, that watches you sign the paperwork and looks at your ID and looks at you and then goes in and, uh, and, and that's it. So what's happening, what's going to be happening in, um, in Suffolk is that uh, on, um, Friday, on, on, a, on a Fridays, uh, there, if, you, if you sign up, uh, he's going to be doing 20, maximum of 20 per day. Apparently, they're not getting that many requests for new permits, uh, and that could be because people don't really want to go out uh, and expose themselves to get it, or they don't, they're not urgent to get one. But some people can be urgent. So the clerk agreed to, um, to, to have a setup like that where, he, and if you miss your appointment, then you go to the back of the line and oh, that's fair enough. So that's, uh, that's what's going on there. So yeah, keep us posted. Again, even though we have the watch team for local government, they're really focusing on gun control. If any of you come across permit issues or anything like that, let me know. Just send a, uh, an email to president at VCDL and tell me what the issue is. And Amy is asking that if somebody took an online training course prior to the law taking effect on January 1st, will that certificate still be good after January 1st? Yeah, training, training uh, according to the law, uh, according to the, the, the law is, is good forever. So once you take the training course, it's good. And whether they say you can't take any more of those is irrelevant. It's still good. Besides, if you get your permit or apply for the permit, uh, anyhow, your permit from then on becomes your proof of training. It doesn't matter what training you had, as long as you got your permit, 
that's your proof of training going forward, even if it's expired. If you goof up and it expires, don't throw it away. Hang on to it. That's your proof of training. So you don't have to go through that. Uh, Robert asked, are, are, there, are the meetings in uh, Annandale going to resume? And once we get through all, all this COVID stuff, yes, they will. Well, yes, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, we may we may do a different location. We'll see what goes on in the future. Uh, but we, we want to get the meetings going as soon as possible. And I'm disappointed to have to say that we're not going to have one in June either. We got that notice just a couple days ago. So we'll be back here in June. And usually we'll probably be back here before, depending on what else is going on. Uh, let's see. Um, Dawn, uh, I saw Dawn's, Dawn's little message. Yeah, uh, she and I met uh, uh, at a symposium on domestic violence. And she was lamenting, yeah, that those bills didn't get signed into law to protect to protect uh, people from violent spouses. It's just, it's a, it's a really, it's a crying shame. And I think they tried several times and every time he gets killed. And um, that just shows you priorities as far as I'm concerned. I think it's pretty clear the priorities there. Absolutely. And so there were several bills in this past session that would have um, kept violent criminals in jail. And uh, those bills were killed. But bills that would have allowed you to protect yourself against those violent criminals were also killed. So um, it, it just shows the... Priority. Jake passed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I think that's why gun owners are just we're, we're we've all had it with all of this. This is why we're turning out in thousands of things, and we need to keep doing that. Uh, we need to keep let the, letting the government know that we're we're tired of this stuff. We're tired of being beat up and and kicked around for merely wanting to protect our families and our own lives. That right. is not a sin. That is not something to be ashamed of. That's not something that should be taken away from us. So um, that's my, I forgot to turn off my wristwatch. Anyhow. So Brian is asking, uh, apparently Brian has a non-resident Virginia permit that expires in April. Um, there are no new laws that would prevent you from renewing your permit, Brian. So you're good to go there. Yeah, permit renewals can be done through the mail. Let's see. All right. Did any of the new legislation that was recently passed in Virginia ex affect Florida's concealed carry not being accepted in Virginia? Um, Christopher wants to know if he wants to conceal carry in Virginia, does he need to do anything else to be legal? Christopher, Virginia recognizes all other states' permits. That's so, um, Yeah, if, if you have a Florida permit and you come to Virginia, you're still good to go. Yeah, they tried. Oh, that, again, that was one of the things I emphasized. People have forgotten just how bad, how much really bad stuff we killed. And one of those things that we killed would have affected reciprocity in at least 25 states. It was, I mean, a lot of you people right now that are caring as you leave the state of Virginia, you might have been really upset when you couldn't protect yourself in South Carolina or somewhere like that. So, um, again, uh, your efforts on lobby day and everything paid off. That bill, that bill died, and we need to make sure it stays dead so that we, wel we welcome all Americans to Virginia, and in turn, we can carry in the vast, vast majority of, of the country. So, Pat, somebody just messaged me privately and said, what's the best way they can donate to VCDL without giving PayPal or anybody any fees? Um, you can mail a check to the membership address. Um, it is on the website, the same address you would mail in your membership application to if you want to do it that way. Um, or you can call one of our numbers and have one of us call you back and we can process a credit card over the phone. Thank you. And you know, donations absolutely help with the fight to defend your rights. And I, I really wanna stress here that 
we received thousands and thousands of donations that were five dollars ten dollars sometimes two and three dollars and all of those little contributions really add up when a whole bunch of people do it and that is what we use to fund these lawsuits to fight the legislation that passed this session um the PAC also the political action committee is going to be extremely important moving forward because um, not this coming election cycle in November, but the following year, we're gonna have some changes in the General Assembly coming up. And um, the Political Action Committee cannot take money from VCDL. Uh, they are totally funded by your contributions and they use that money to help support candidates that are going to fight for your gun rights. So, um, but if you do donate to the PAC, uh, we are required by law to collect your employer and your occupation, um, which is not owner of a company. It would be like what you do in that company. Um, or if you're a student, that would be your occupation. If you're a housewife, that would be your occupation. If you retire, that would be uh, your occupation. But we have to collect your occupation, your employer, and the city and state where the company is based. And um, those things are not made public unless your contributions for the calendar year are more than $100. So um, we, you know, we are required by law to collect that, but we don't have to make it public unless you um, donate over $100. Yeah, it's like when you when you use your credit card, you know, you, you buy 10 bucks here, five bucks there, two bucks there, 15 somewhere else. Then the bill comes in, you go, holy cow, how did it add up to so much? And the same thing applies with your donations, except it's a good whole yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> for us. But uh, uh, let's see, I saw a few questions in here. Um, uh, Christopher Hayes. Um, a former Virginian, ah, why did you have to leave? You know, we, we can use all the help we can get. But yeah, we, we do have people supporting us from out of state. We have members out of state that, uh, that people that don't even live in Virginia that are members of the organization um, helping with the fight. Uh, I think they realize that um, if Virginia falls, then um, a lot of other things are gonna fall. We're, we're doing our best to show the other states how, this, how a battle like this is fought and won. That's, that's our goal. Um, yeah. Now, Lady Bell was asking about turnaround time for membership. Uh, I just got an update this afternoon from the membership department. We're working on December 26th currently. Um, yes, we are way, 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 way behind. But um, again, we don't want to spend money to hire a, a staff to process all that stuff because that money is better spent defending your rights. And we also don't want to take the chance on compromising your personal information. So you are members in good standing as of the day you sent your application in. And if that needs to be verified, you can contact us for um, volunteer purposes, um, or if it needs to be verified for a, a member discount or something, we'll be happy to do that for you. But please just have a little patience. You'll eventually get your membership packet in the mail. And we're extending the memberships by an extra year just to make sure because it is taking so long to get it processed. And in the meantime, we're also trying to work on a new system because our membership has absolutely exploded. And um, the old system is uh, quickly becoming obsolete. So um, <clears throat> along with everything else we're doing, we're looking at options for a better system for processing memberships. But um, I hope that answers that question. I see Cal Johnson's uh, asking if Governor Northam's executive order on COVID-19 affects Virginia CHP law. You know, right after Katrina hit in 2000, when was that, 2005 or something? I can't, but anyhow, whenever Katrina hit and we saw what happened in Louisiana, BCDL got, got going and we got a law passed that next year that said the governor has no authority uh, during a state of emergency to affect anything dealing with guns, except 
in a um, uh, an area that's designated uh, like a um, what am I thinking sanctuary or whatever um, um, a shelter a shelter mm -hmm. a shelters are the only things he can control that way so uh, your your CHP is perfectly fine and there's nothing he can do about it. Well, that's right. why there's that's why there was so much misinformation about the masks and being a felon and carrying a gun and, you know, how you could state that you have a medical reason, um, but not have to disclose the medical reason if you're going to wear a mask. And some people were saying, I'm not wearing a mask because I'm carrying a firearm. And if I was to put on a mask, it would make me a felon. Yeah, yeah, well, it won't. But um, so, you know, if you feel like you need to wear a mask, don't let don't let the fact that you're carrying uh, stop you. And certainly don't leave your gun at home if you're if you want to take it with you. Um, so um, you'll uh, you know, if anybody has a problem with this, you know, let us know right away. Uh, we're not we're not envisioning and have heard of no problems so far. Um, knock on wood. Gotta let the leprechauns know. So. You see Rachel's question there on the screen? Yeah. How can Northam say not wearing a mask is a class one misdemeanor when governors can't make law? I believe there's an enabling law that allows him to set a class one misdemeanor on people not obeying the um, emergency orders. So that's how he, he didn't, he's not making law there. He's simply taking advantage of a law that's already been written to cover emergencies. I mean, there, there again, there could be a case where um, some major disaster happened in an area and they have to get people out and they have to have some way to, to try to enforce that in an emergency. Um, so that, that's what that is. So he's not making law there. If he was, so, then he's taking him to court. Um, Robert is, is asking, at the, well, he wants clarification. He says, VA does not recognize all states in the U.S. for concealed carry. We have reciprocity or some limited reciprocity with 36 states. So, Robert, when you read on the state police website the reciprocity, what they're listing are states that recognize Virginia's permits. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, we had our attorney general um, try to mess around with the reciprocity and wanted to cancel uh, us recognizing a whole bunch of other states if they didn't meet certain requirements, so on and so forth. And um, DCDL fought back really hard on that. We got a law passed in the General Assembly that actually says that we recognize the permits of any other state that issues permits. So um, Virginia does recognize all other states permits, but not all other states recognize Virginia permits. And I think that's where the confusion is coming in. Right. Now they, that was the law they wanted to change. They wanted to put it back the old way. And mm -hmm. that's the one that we fought, fought that off. Right. But it would actually take an act of the general assembly to change that. And they tried to change it this year, but it was not successful. So yes, as of right now, uh, Virginia recognizes all other states' permits, but not all other states recognize Virginia's permit. Yeah, and that's safe through July 1st of next year. Uh, mm -hmm. Earliest, if they make a change next year to the law, that it would take effect. So you're in good shape. Come visit us. Okay. Well, we'll see okay. Are there other questions out there that uh, we need to answer? Trying to scroll back and see if I missed any. I don't think so. I, I was kind of watching that while you were answering the other ones. Um. Oh, bowling pin shoot. That was the subject that we were supposed to address yeah. and, and didn't. So um, there is a group uh, of people up in Louisa County that put on three to four bowling pin shoots in a year and each one is a charity event and they benefit different causes and there is one coming up uh is it june ed uh, i'm looking right now as you started talking about it 
Uh huh. So there's one coming up pretty soon, and there is an event on the VCDL page. Even though we are not the sponsors of the event, we put an event on our VCDL page because the proceeds of that um, shooting event are to benefit VCDL. And if you've never shot a bowling pin match before, it's a ton of fun. Um, it you you actually bowl with bullets you you shoot bowling pins off of a table and the first one to clear their table wins that round and um wins a cash prize so it, it's really fun um easy to do you're classified by the type of firearm you're using so nine millimeters are are um put up with other nine millimeters and 22s are against 22s. And um, it's it's a fun, safe environment to go and participate. It's July 11th. Okay. In Louisa, the, yeah, the flyer uh, is, um, is uh, up. Uh, I put it in an alert and I think I had to have it on our page. So it's not VCDL, it's not a VCDL event that we're hosting. It's an event that's being hosted, and we're the benefactors. They're doing it for us, um, and that's extremely nice of them. They 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 have a lot of people turn out. But really, if you've never done that, you don't know what you're missing. It's a it's a lot of fun. They they have uh, just groups of people that go up. Uh, they've got so I forget how many slots, like nine slots at a, a time, and and the guy that they fin clears the table the first wins that round. And I say there's a cash prize there if you want, or you got a little chit that you can hold uh, just as, you know, uh, proof that you won that round, uh, something to brag about. Right. Uh, and accuracy counts because knocking the pin down uh, doesn't necessarily knock it off the table. And you have to knock them off the table in order for it to, um, to count. So... Um, actually, if you just knock it down and it lands with the head of the pin facing you, it's even harder to clear your table. So uh, make your first shot count. A yeah, solid hit on the pin will usually take it down, but if you nick the pin, yeah, it can, yeah. It can land on that table. And if it, yeah, she's right, if it's facing head first, you, it takes a good shot to take that out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But it's all competition. It's, it's you know, it's gun owners you're competing with, so it's going to be fun. Yep. And so that, like I say, that'll be July 11th. We'll have more information on that as the date, uh, the date comes closer. I know I definitely want to be there for that. I try to make it every year um, just because I just really enjoy it. They do they do that match, uh, a match. I think they do like three a year. And now they'll probably only do two this year, this one and maybe one more maybe uh, because of this COVID thing. Uh, Christopher Hayes asking about national reciprocity. Well, not with the Congress we have now. And unfortunately, when the Republicans were in control and could have done it, they didn't do it. So it'd be nice if the gun rights people, when they're in power, if they actually do something. That would be great. Um, the other side doesn't seem to hesitate in jumping in. So uh, our side should never hesitate either. Right. Ultimately, I'd like to see um, national constitutional carry and a Supreme go. Court decision on that so that there's no question whatsoever. But um, that's going to take a while if it ever happens. Well, I never thought I'd get D.C. before I would get Maryland. So that that's just crazy. <laughs> uh, what's this? What's the status of the uh, contest to sign up new members? Well, you... we have to get through December yet, and then we can check and see. Um, we're almost there, so uh, it shouldn't be too much longer before we're tallying the, the 2019 membership contest and see. Um, then we'll have to figure out what, what guns they're going to win. So uh, that's for, I guess, next month's meeting. Yeah, well, we were originally, the plan originally back for the world change underneath us was to, in all, all different ways, not just COVID, but the, going back to the Democrats winning the election and then threatening gun owners. Uh, the plan was originally, yeah, we were going to do it on lobby day. <laughs> that was, there was no way uh, that uh, we could do it, could have done it on lobby day. That was uh, totally, it would have been easier to fly to the moon than it would have been to do that. So we will, we will get it done, hopefully. 
Uh, probably, probably the next time we have a VCDL meeting in, indoors, uh, we'll probably, hopefully, we'll have the information by then. Um, so Patrick Walsh is asking about punishment with this uh, face mask for people that refuse to wear one or whatever. Um, so this is another flaw in his um, plan, if you will. He what they're doing is actually having the health department uh, enforce this. And the way that they're doing it is they're um, sanctioning businesses that don't enforce it when people come into their businesses. So they're making a business choose um, whether or not they alienate their customers by banning them from the store or um, putting a, imposing a trespass charge on them if they refuse to wear a face mask, or um, if they don't require face masks, then they can pull a business license or find the business or the owner of the business or, or the manager or whatever. So um, again, it's, it's misdirected punishment um, and it's making um, somebody else into the bad guy and kind of passing the buck, if you will. So, um, you know, just, just one more form of tyranny there. Jonathan uh, Gould was asking, he says he reloads, would I be able to reclaim my brass at the, at the uh, polling pin shoot? And I believe the answer is yes to that. Yeah, a lot of people uh, keep their brass. It's... it's uh, in fact, they're probably just as happy if you do tote it out of there. So the answer is yes. Yeah, and if you're worried about it, shoot a revolver. Yeah. Let him eat cake. All right. I guess right. Uh, I guess we that's probably all the questions. It's nine o'clock, so it's been about an hour. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we well we got everybody online. If there's anything else we want to uh, talk about. I could do a show and tell real fast. Uh, Jimmy, I, I, there's going to be a, uh, I see Davis putting a challenge out there for other people to uh, match his membership dues with equal amount. But to answer your, qu your question, Jimmy, which is uh, your first year, we do normally have in-person meetings, but with this COVID thing, uh, we've slowed them down or stopped them, actually. But generally what we do is if you need a meeting in your area and you get in touch with Philip and you have a venue and a restaurant and everything else to make it happen, we try and make it happen. All right. Let me pick up on, let's see, we've got a couple here. Uh, Jimmy Hayden, uh, this is my first year as a member and I've yet to go to any events or meetings. Will you be doing anything coming up in the Roanoke area? Yeah. Uh, we have a very active uh, group out in the Roanoke area. Uh, one of our board of directors is out there and uh, they have uh picnics and uh, dinner meetings and, and various things. Uh, they'll be announced on VA Alert right now, again, everything. But yeah, we will. That will come back. I mean, they, they had stuff going on. It seemed like every few months they had something. A great bunch of people out there, just like the rest of the state with, with that. Uh, Ed DiPolo, have you seen the letter from the Virginia Chief of Police? No, Ed, I have not. I don't know what you're referring to. If you can get me a copy of that, just send it to president at vcdl.org. This is this is the I don't know what he's got, but this is this is how we we learn all kinds. There's so many of you out there that very few things slip through the cracks that we don't find out about. So I'll check out what Ed's got. I uh, show and tell thing. I picked this up. Uh, uh, okay, there we go. I got to do everything backwards. Uh, this was one of the lowers that that has the. Uh, but I, I talked Pat uh, into uh, using flat dark earth to fill in the, um, the the logo and stuff on here. This is the one of the state logo. It shows the woman instead of a spear. It's got got her holding an AR-15, and the uh, selector switch is sick. Semper Tyrannus in the three positions. I thought she did a good job on that. Yeah, stick gonna, him off. Uh, Stick in full screen there, Ed, so you can see the whole receiver. Oh, sorry. Hold it up again, Philip. Okay, hold on a second. Yep. So, yeah, if I seem a little uncoordinated, it's because everything's backwards. If I want to move left, I got to move right. So, uh, yeah, and so I'm gonna I'll do a flat dark earth version of this, and that way it'll all match up nicely. 
Very cool. We'll make a pistol out of it again. That'll be another pistol. Like well, don't forget, the, don't forget the very important law that if you make it a rifle, it's a rifle. But if you make it a pistol, then it can be a pistol or a rifle and a pistol and a rifle and a pistol and a rifle. Yeah, the first, the first build, if you ever want a pistol, make your first build a pistol. Then you're good. If you buy a gun complete and you think you might want a pistol out of it, make it change the upper, buy a pistol. Uh, and then convert it to a rifle with let's get it, reverse it, get the rifle upper. They dispatch a Northam cabinet member to live with you to make sure what your first build is going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just another example of government logic because you cannot change a rifle to a pistol, but you can change a pistol to a rifle and then back to a pistol. And speaking of Palmetto, if you go on there and you order that uh, Virginia 15, BCDL gets a little piece of that pie. I, I flew down there and they handed uh, me a big check for like 60, 60 grand. And they have uh, they have more coming to us. So keep on buying those because you end up getting a cool lower and you end up helping the organization. John, um John Linton asked where you got that lower made. That is the Palmetto State Armory VCDL lower. Uh, the, they call it the Virginia 15. And then I did the color fill on the lower for Philip. So. She did a great job. Those are $100 a fill, right, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite that much. But <laughs> All right, folks, um, unless anybody has anything else that any more questions that they want to send in the message bar, um, we've been on here about an hour. So Ed can. <laughs> Ed's getting ready to drive his motorcycle. <laughs> oh. getting, ready to getting ready to comply for tomorrow. So somebody, <laughs> somebody, red, somebody red flagged me. Um, oh. I. I was at a friend of mine, I'm not going to mention any names, but he holds a barbecue and he's fed 5,000 people in the community. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to one of the barbecues and they kicked it off with a couple of guys, also VCDL members. They sang in a barbershop quartet and I recorded it. And a person from high school said, oh my God, where were your masks? I'm like, we were outside. We weren't serving food. I'm not wearing a mask. Well, she called the health department on the barbecue and said, they're serving all these people. They're not wearing masks. Ed says he's not wearing a mask. And my name is similar to the other guys. So they're like, you weren't wearing a mask. He's like, I never said that. That must've been Ed. <laughs> so oh, so yeah. they're, gonna, they're, they're gonna inspect <laughs> now. But. Yeah, who needs friends huh? or enemies? Right. Uh, let me see, it was, okay. I guess, um, I guess that's it. We'll uh, we'll keep everybody posted as uh, things continue to progress. It's uh, like I say, part five of six will be coming out. Then I'll start six, which will be the last part of the uh, lobby day uh, alert. That one's going to be that's going to be an amazing one. Uh, literally, and if there's if there's a topic if there's a topic that you guys want us to cover, I know we have we're gonna do we're gonna do a video information video on the VCDL pack. Um, we're going to do an information. We're going to do a video on what the new gun laws are going to be as it gets close to that. Even though Phil touched on it, but if there's something that you need us to cover, um, you can send me an email, uh, social media at vcdl.org, um, or message me on Facebook and go. I think it would. I think it would be helpful if you guys covered this. Uh, a week or so, a couple weeks ago, uh, Pat and Joanna and I did one that was like, okay, you've joined the VCDL. Now what? Now how can you help? And you can go to our YouTube channel because all these lives that we do, we put on our YouTube channel too. So you can go watch them later and kind of refresh or share them with your friends or new gun owners because um, we want to just kind of keep this information flowing because we want everyone to be informed so that they're better voters and more engaged and kind of keep, keep the effort rolling. Yeah, we were trying to keep the COVID uh, from, uh, you know, bringing things to a complete halt. So, and pretty soon, believe me, I'm missing the, the, the live meetings. I mean, I've, I've had withdrawals now, withdrawals now for a while. Uh, I'm missing the food. It's, yeah, it's just nice meeting everybody, you know, face to face. Yeah, the food. But um, so we'll, uh, we will, as soon as we can, we'll, uh, we'll be doing live meetings again and hopefully start doing them all around the state, get caught up.
Uh, keep in mind, it's already, you know, May. We're about to go into June. It's going to be lobby day before we know it. So we got to take off work now. Put in for yeah. vacation. Martin Luther King Day 2021. January 18th, the third Monday. Every year, third Monday in January. January 18th. If you do like me and you go to SHOT Show, skip that Monday and go on Tuesday. Yep, yeah. you're only missing a day. Yeah, and if, if we can get people out there to help us fight one more year of this stuff and then hopefully turn things around at the, in the polls that year, uh, you'll want to be there. I mean, that was a, quite, a, quite an event. And yep. uh, I expect, uh, I'm hoping it'll be bigger than we even had last year, as big as that was. We'll see. Fantastic. You guys. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us. Yep. Y'all have a good night and stay safe and stay well. Good night.